Hey, welcome to vlog three. I'm back from Belize, went on a family trip. Did you see my video about the tarpon? This was so stinking cool to be able to feed tarpon out of our hands and have them jump up and grab that. Oh my gosh. But we spent half of our time in San Pedro. So we flew Belize City, flew out to Ambergris Key. We were in San Pedro for the first half of the week and then we rented a golf cart and drove way up north towards the Mexico border. And it was pretty remote up there. We did some snorkeling and uh, I got to snorkel with not only turtles, but permit as well. Oh my gosh, my dream to be with permit. They were so close. I wanted to kill them. I mean, catch them and release them. This was my first chance to get out and go spear fishing, And it was super rad. Had a really good time doing that. My son loved it as well. And not only was the food delicious, the drinks nice and cold and refreshing. Uh, the weather was beautiful, but we just had a super good time. And if it's raining right now while you're watching this, I'm sorry. This week we have the film tour coming up and man, I am super excited for the film tour. Not only to see the films, but I'm really excited to see all of you that are gonna be there and I'm excited to raise money for the Wild Steelhead Coalition. We still have tickets available. So if you are available and interested Thursday night at six o'clock, come on out to the Blue Mouse Theater in Proctor District of Tacoma and we'll see you there at six o'clock. Now I wanna give you a fishing report for some fishing that's been happening in March, but first I have, I can't wait, I have to tell you about our new Gig Harbor Water Sports launch. But we're really excited to announce a relaunch of our Gig Harbor Water Sports brand, but we're not launching a store, it's gonna be an eco tour company. A lot of times we have people that, <laughs> They, they come into the shop and they hear about our kayak trips and they're like, man, I really want to go on one of your kayak trips out in the sound. That sounds really, really fun, but I don't want to fish. We're going to launch these eco tour trips. We're going to leave the Gig Harbor Fly Shop running fly fishing trips. And then we're going to be able to offer this other service to people. So maybe you want to go on a trip with us this summer and we'll take you on a kayak trip down through the Narrows over to Fox Island, or we'll paddle board with you out to Dead Man's Island, or go explore the Nisqually Wildlife Refuge, or even do a full day kayak trip out to Hood Canal, and we'll go crabbing and oyster shucking and have some fun in the kayaks. For many of you that are interested in trying out Hobie kayaks, because you're interested in buying one, this will be a great way for you to be able to spend half the day or a full day out on the water in a Hobie to be able to try these things out and see why they're worth buying. The big question we've been getting asked about fishing in March is about chum fry. Are the chum fry out in Puget Sound yet? And yes, they are. They are starting uh, to leave the creeks now and Cuthbert have been chasing after them. And for those of you that aren't familiar with this, uh, the chum salmon spawn in the fall. When they, when they hatch, their fry uh, are, are really small. They're in, well, they, they're really small when they hatch, but when they leave the creeks, they're about an inch and a half long and they start their migratory journey out to the ocean. So they'll spend about 60 days it takes them to be able to work their way along the shorelines out to the Pacific. And when they're, when they're that small, they're vulnerable, they're not strong swimmers yet, and cutthroat, resident coho, uh, blackmouth, birds, all, there's all sorts of stuff that will just devour these things. It kind of signals the kickoff of beach fishing uh, in the spring. And so I know some of you have been out fishing and finding some resident coho, uh, more resident coho than cutthroat, but now with these chum fry out, a lot of cutthroat are done spawning or back out in the salt. This is really gonna be the time to get that rod out and go hit a beach. If you were thinking about booking a half day trip here this spring, April is a great time to do that. So I highly suggest take a look at your calendar, look at the weather and uh, get a trip on the books. Water temps have been creeping up with local lakes and fishing has been getting better. There's not a lot of lakes that are open. There's a few that are open year round. They've recently been stocked with some really big fish, which is great. Contact us for details on that but all of the other lowland lakes that are closed will be opening in April. So we're really excited about that opener and anticipate some really great fishing coming up. We really wanna answer your questions about fly fishing to help you be a better angler out on the water. And one of you asked about what kind of fly should I have in my Sea Run Cutthroat box? It's a great question. And instead of answering that question here, we actually put together a whole video on the six must have Sea Run Cutthroat flies for Puget Sound and that video is up on YouTube. Check it out, leave us a comment on that video of what you think about our answers to that. We'd love to hear your input on what you think are the must have flies as well. 
We had a second question from a customer and it was, how can I become a better caster for fishing beaches? And I have two quick answers for that that I hope really helps you out. And the first one is maybe something you've heard before, but I wanna explain it because even though people have heard it, they don't do it. And that is the idea of keeping the rod tip up high. And now that I've said that, you're like, oh yeah, I know, keep the rod tip up high. But what ends up happening is that many anglers, they keep that rod high. And then on their last forward stroke, instead of stopping high, they drop the rod tip down towards the water. Now, yes, we're gonna lay the line out on the water, but if you stop up high, it's going to create a tighter loop and it's gonna have a lot more energy as it pulls that line out. When you drop that rod tip down towards the water, it opens up the loop, diffuses your energy, and you lose a lot on that cast. Now with beach fishing, many times we're fishing integrated shooting head lines, like a Rio outbound short or a coastal quick shooter. And so you have that really heavy head on the front of that line. And the idea is that is gonna pull out that running line. So if you stop up nice and high and send that thing, it's gonna be able to pull that running line out. Now, speaking of those integrated shooting head lines, the other thing that I see anglers do often is they carry too much line in the air. Now the Rio outbound short, that front head is only 30 feet long. And if you're trying to false cast 50 feet of line, that head is so thick and that running line is so thin that it can't transfer the energy and it gets really clunky as it is unrolling. And you end up losing a lot of energy. You introduce slack into the cast. You get those wavelengths down it so you don't have that good transfer of energy. So if you keep a shorter amount of line out, and get that color change closer to the tip of the rod. You don't want to have a lot of that color change out of the tip of the rod. Keep it close and then focus on starting slow, accelerating to the abrupt stop. Keep that rod tip high and then it's really going to send it and that should help you be a better caster off the beach. Next week I'm heading to Mexico on one of our hosted trips and I'm really excited to get down to my buddy Sam Flea's place in Hobosh and go chase some tarpon. And so looking forward to being in the sun. We'll definitely have some videos and a report from that trip very soon. Before I wrap up this vlog, one last thing. For the month of April, we are doing a trade-in special. So if you have a old rod or reel lying around that you'd rather turn into new gear, for the month of April, you can trade in your gear. There's no fees. We'll give you a free hat when you do it and then you get store credit for that gear that we sell that you can apply towards any purchase in the store. Upgraded gear, free hat, no fees, it's too good to be true. Must be a scam, right? Well, no scam. We, we tried to put together a scam, but we couldn't really think of a good idea. So if you have any, let, let us know if you have a good one or a bad one. I'm not sure which it would be. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Gig Harbor Fly Show and listening to this vlog about updates of what's going on here at the Gig Harbor Fly Shop and we'll see you next month.